Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh... Happy St. Patrick's Day to start off with. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I don't have a whole lot to share tonight, but I thought tonight would be a good time to chat and see what you guys are up to. Um, I know a lot of people are home, whether by choice or not, but uh, if you guys have questions about projects you're working on, things you want to talk about yarn-wise, um, things like that. So... Um, this is going to be kind of a viewer's choice type of stream. So if you guys have questions, I would love to answer what I can. Um, the, the stream title does say, uh, project updates. So, um, mostly I am working on, I'm still working on my weaving project, um, making kind of slow progress on that, but, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm still working on that. And then um actually I've got this to show tonight. Um this is a hat my husband mostly made and I finished off, but it's out of the universe yarn from Ice Yarns. And uh I don't know, it turned out pretty cool. Um it was relatively difficult to work up. Um, the yarn, it has that fuzz behind it and it, it really, really wants to grab onto itself. Um, and so part of the hat, I was throwing the yarn for him and it stuck to every little dry spot on my fingers, like microfiber. Um, it feels nice worked up. Like I, I don't hate it as it stands, but, um, but yeah, I, it, it was not the easiest yarn to work with, so I don't know if I would necessarily call this a super beginner-friendly yarn. Um, you can see it's catching my fingers just as I'm, like, touching. Um, the little fibers are are grabbing. It's a relatively slim yarn, so I think I would be just splitting the yarn and not trying to cut it up. Okay, so my husband was saying that he had some trouble with it splitting, um, which is odd because it is a chainette-style yarn, so... Um, but the, but the chainette's big enough that you can go through the chains. You wouldn't have that problem with crochet, probably, because of what the silk is. Uh-huh. But with a needle, it would Okay. So what he's saying is, when he was taking it off of the, uh, circular knitting machine, um, he kept going through the, the chainette, uh, with the needle. So he doesn't think it would be a problem for crochet, but, like, when you go to weave in your ends and everything... Um, that it might be relatively difficult. So, um, all right. So a whole bunch of people saying hello. Uh, Twine Twiddler finally made a stream. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's see. Whole bunch of people. So welcome to everybody. I'm, uh, thanks for joining me. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So, um, yeah, just welcome. So this is really all we've been working on. So I've done some, I did some deep cleaning of the house. And so I spent a lot of my weekend um, just doing some spring cleaning, not, not like sanitizing, just cleaning out cabinets and stuff. Um, and then, then yeah. So. Uh, Zukao is asking, is the thread wrapped around a cord? Um, it's sort of a weird yarn. It's like a like a chain tube. Um, I don't know if there's any. Let me see if there's some in this bag. I don't know that there is. Oh, here. So this is the other color. It's sort of like a peacock color. Um, let's see if I can find that. Yeah, but I can f pull the end out of this one. Here it is. So it's, we're going to try and zoom in here. I'm going to move this out of the way. So it's like a chain tube. And then it is full of like black fuzz. And the black fuzz pokes out all the way through. Um, and so it, it, it's a very halo-y fuzzy yarn with sort of like a tube center. 
but because the tube is is made of a pretty fine yarn and then it's it's pretty wide like you can see here if i yeah so what he was talking about is the chains will just split and you can easily go through the center and just kind of make a mess of it um and then on top of that this black fuzz is very very grabby so the the chain is very silky and smooth but the the black fuzz is very grabby and wants to hold on to itself and so what you end up with is is a yarn that wants to like cling um so it it wants to like stick together this way and doesn't really want to slide past each other would be really bad for like having to pull your stitches out it's beautiful um and it really feels fine worked up into a hat um and you can see like really shimmery um it is just like super metallic and shiny in person um and and really works up pretty cool but is not the like most amazing luxurious yarn to work with <laughs> um it wants to like grab onto itself and and cling and and fights you a little bit so you really have to want the colors to to really work with it so i don't know i think it turned out really cool um i'm glad that we didn't you know knit a whole sweater or something out of it because it was i think it was too much of a fight um but for a hat it basically seems fine um and again the ice yarns yarn uh is super super cheap uh shipping's a little bit expensive but um but yeah so uh question for what is it made of so it is 19% wool, 11% acrylic, 70% polyamide. So my guess, and I don't know this for sure, my guess is that the the chainette tube is the polyamide, um, which is basically nylon, or very similar to. Um, and then the filling, so the black fuzz, is probably the 19% wool and 11% acrylic. That's just my my gut feeling on this that that's probably um probably how they've got it uh would it be nicer without the black fuzz um it probably would be easier to work with but it would be a lot finer get one that was like silky like that that was just the um maybe um this is not one of everything out of the ice yarns a lot this is just the the stuff that you pulled to go knit up. So, yeah, so I don't have one in there. I'd have to go fishing through the ice yarns or go back and look at the ice yarns video. Um, but it's, it would possibly be nicer to work with if it was just a chainette nylon, but it wouldn't be, it, yeah, like the, the, it would be very slippery and it wouldn't have like the softness and the warmth. Um, and like the, the fuzz is actually really soft and makes it pretty cozy. Um, it is still grabbing my fingers though, which I don't love. It feels a bit like, uh, like a microfiber cloth. Sometimes they feel really nice, but if your fingers are just a little bit dry, um, and mine are right now, uh, that it, it's very grabby. So if I had a little bit of lotion on, it feels like a million times nicer so um but yeah it i think overall if you like the color and you really like it go ahead and try it um again the ice yarns are very cheap you've got to buy them in sort of bulk like i think you had to buy four of these but i think they're like a dollar fifty or something a piece so i mean it's pretty cheap to buy four of them at a buck 50 a piece it's just that the shipping is rather expensive um so when i when i did the whole huge ice yarns unboxing uh everything was about two bucks a ball um when it all like evened out with shipping but i also spent quite a bit to get it down to that price um 
if you if you spend less, you might pay more per ball because your shipping might be like closer to even with your uh your total spend. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So like I said, that's really all I've been working on. Um, did a lot of spring cleaning and just been very busy uh, doing a variety of other things, but not a whole lot of work in fiber arts. So um, like I said, been working on my weaving. I haven't really touched the mermaid. I know I showed you guys the mermaid um, a few weeks ago, I think, was the last time I showed that, and I haven't really worked on the mermaid at all. Um, I'm hoping to get some time this weekend to be able to work on it. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, Twain Twitter is saying I love ice yarns, been buying them for a few years now. Um, yeah, I so this was our first, like, actual project with the ice yarns. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to crochet with them yet, but, uh, my husband was looking forward to working on the circular knitter, so um, he kind of got a jump start on me and and made the one hat. So that's the that's the first one we've worked with. Um, a lot of what we ended up buying was chainette style filled tubes, so we may find that we have sort of similar problems throughout, or maybe one line will be slightly better or worse than the other. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with the Rockstar Colors, I think it's called, um, which are these, uh, these ones. They're also a filled tube. They're not as grabby, though, um, so I don't know if the composition of the, the fuzz is different, because they're way fuzzier, um, which would make me think it's worse, but, but the fuzz is not as grabbing at my fingers so um this again is rockstar colors i was looking for composition but i can't find it there it is uh this is 19 percent merino wool 19 percent acrylic 62 percent polyester so um maybe the merino versus the other wool is the the grabbiness or I'm not sure, but, um, it's a pretty nice feeling. So, um, oh, my husband commenting that it was a lot of it. A lot of the stuff that we bought, we bought a lot of DK and a lot of like lace weight yarns. Um, and none of those will circular knit. So he had to kind of pick and choose the, the worsted weight yarns. Um, and Twin Twitter is saying they carry a lot of lightweight. Their site is, site is hard to navigate in order to find the chunky yarns. Um, yeah, their their website is not, not amazing. Uh, it's a little bit rudimentary. It reminds me of like websites in the 90s um, where it's like a lot of links on the side and you got to try and figure out where exactly you're at they also just carry hundreds and hundreds of yarns um and so just trying to remember what you saw and digging through like the layers of yarn um can just be a little bit overwhelming um it's part of the reason that i just kept putting off ordering from them um yeah basically my husband had to push to do it after enough of you um had asked to see ice yarns because I would start getting stuff put in a cart and then I would have 35 things in a cart and it was like, all right, I can't spend $700 on yarn. So, um, then I kind of dump everything and start over and not really know what I wanted to do. So, um, okay. That's a good tip. So twin twiddler saying that if you're going to put a big order in, sometimes it's cheaper to break it into two. Um, probably cause international shipping, like if you get to a, I think we shipped six kilograms, which is a, about, I don't know, 14 pounds or so. Um, so it might be worth splitting it into two seven pound orders, um, in order to save a little money. And that makes sense. Um, they basically shipped it in a, like heavy duty garbage bag almost. I mean, it was a shipping bag, but it was as big as a garbage bag. So. Um, 
But yeah, that's really all I've got. I'm trying to think if I've got anything else that I wanted to share with you. No. Last week, somebody asked something, and I said if I had my computer set up, I would show, and I don't remember what it was. Um, I know the sweetheart cowl came up. Maybe I was just thinking a link, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, my daughter says she loves rock star. It's so soft. I think it would be slippery, but it's not. Two shawls at a rock star and everyone loved them. Okay. Good to know. Um, and then Val's suggesting checking the clearance closeout area. You can usually find a different types. Winter yarns are thicker. Okay. Um, so those are all good tips for looking around. Um, I may end up going back to ice yarns. They had a ton, if I remember correctly, a ton of cotton available. Um, and I might order some for weaving. Um, or maybe that was hobby. That had all of the different sizes of cotton. Um, like a maybe like an eight two or an eight four, like a fine weight. Actually, if you want to grab your laptop, yeah, go to Ice. They have something new on clearance this week. Maybe you might want. Okay. Um. All right. I'm gonna wake my computer up. We're gonna go to Ice Yarn's website and see. I don't want to open Discord. Yeah. Um, they have a new rock and roll yarn on the front page. In clearance yarns? Uh, in the, in the shelf. All right. Hold on a second. Uh, you want to take me back off screen for one second? I'll just open the link. Bear with us one second. I'm going to open up Ice Yarns, and my husband's saying there's something on there that I might be interested in. So I'm going to pull that up. And then... Ah! Sorry. I double-clicked, uh, and it closed my browser as well. I was trying to just close Discord. Because otherwise notifications pop up throughout. Okay. Yeah, we're good. So this is a tube cotton mixed lot, which is interesting. Yeah, it's the thing with a bunch of mixed colors. Yeah, so that's actually pretty cool because, um, like I was saying, you can, uh, you you have to sort of buy one color of like a whole bag, and so this they're actually showing. Um, they mix some lots together, and you can uh, you can get a mixed lot. I wonder if uh, you actually get what's shown, or if you just get any eight random ones. Um, it looks like there's a bunch of different mixed lots, so you so you probably get what's shown. Um, but yeah, there's a quite a few mixed lots here. So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and like I was saying, the ice yarns are so cheap to buy. Like, so this is eight balls of yarn. Your total price is $4.99. Um, so I'm curious what shipping to the U.S. is. So... Yeah, that's fine. I was just curious, like, what one bag costs. So. Um. $22 asking, can I show some different techniques for stained glass granny squares? Um, unfortunately, I'm not f super familiar with stained glass granny squares. Um, I don't do a whole lot of granny squares to begin with and and really I don't do a whole lot of squares um at all. Um uh, I've done a few, but I haven't even joined them up yet. 
Um, so that's actually pretty outside my wheelhouse. Um, I am pulling up some stainless glass granny squares. There are some really beautiful ones. Um, wow. Yeah, there's some really cool ones in here. Um, I'm positive that I could do something like this. Um, I run into the same problem here, though, is it's that I'm, I'm a pretty novice pattern designer and something like these are, are a little bit out of my wheelhouse for design. Um, and I'm positive I could do them and I'm also positive that I could show you how to do them. I just can't really make a video because I, I don't want to take somebody else's work and then make a video off of their pattern um and and so if if i can if i can pull together some skills i'll uh i'll go through and look at a few of these patterns and if i can pull together some like general skills um then i can maybe put put something together for you um otherwise yeah i it, i mean it looks like it's going to be a lot of color changes and it looks like it's going to be a lot of post stitches um there's some really just stunningly beautiful patterns in there though so i can absolutely understand why you'd want to work on something like this Huh? She has for some different techniques. So, yeah. Oh, um... Oh, okay. I see. So... Also not a uh, big fan of granny squares, but you have to do one for a friend. Okay. Um... Well, yeah. I can... I can see what assistance I can offer, but... But yeah, that one actually is a technique I haven't really worked with myself, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I've done post stitches before, and we maybe have videos on post stitches. That might not be one that we did a, a video on. Um, no, it's called post stitches. It would have been. Um, the really interesting technique, though. So, I'm just looking at different squares here. Um, I wonder if these are done with surface stitches rather than post stitches. I'd have to, I'd have to look around a little bit. Um, let's see, I missed a comment a little higher. Um... Yeah, the Z Zuko said, uh, uh, yeah, hobby when we were talking about the the cotton yarn. So, um, hobby is one of the other websites that I wanted to order from. It looks like they're having a spring sale. Um, but they have all of this like single color cotton in like whatever weight you want it to be. Um, and so they've got 8-4 cotton. I think they've got 8-2 cotton. Um, but I, with the weaving that I, I've been looking at, um, fine weight cotton, you can make like dish towels and, uh, placemats and things like that. And it, they, there's some really cool techniques. So, um, I've been looking at maybe getting some cotton to do that. So, pretty though. This Picasso is very pretty. It reminds me of um what's the new thing from Premiere? Spun colors. So, this is spun colors and this is Picasso. 
So I don't know. Looks very similar. It also looks like the Red Heart roll with it melange. Um, maybe. Uh, I think a lot of people do use cotton on a cone for, for weaving. A lot of times because you need a ton of it for warping. And preferably without knots. So, where you wouldn't want to join a whole bunch of balls together. So, um... So yeah, maybe maybe I do want cotton on a cone, which I think is an option from Ice Yarns. Oh. Um. Ah, I see it. Let's take a look around and see what's going on here. So, Ice Yarns is loaded with pop-ups for their Instagram. 100% cotton. Also, for that pack of eight, it was uh, $8 shipping cost. Okay. Which puts it at $18 total. Okay. So, back when we were talking about the yarn where I said it was eight balls and it was... um, $4 It's four ninety nine for the whole pack. It was an additional $8 for shipping. So... At that point, you're at like thirteen dollars for eight balls. It's still not bad, um, but you're you're into more than double for shipping. Uh, or oh, it's still only a dollar fifty ball. Okay, so you're still at only a dollar fifty a ball. So it's still a really good price. Um, so you gotta it, ice yarns is a little bit win some lose some. Like the prices look amazing, but the, the shipping's going to be more than you're used to. Well, unless you live in Canada, in which case it's probably what you're used to. Um, but for, for U.S. shipping, uh, we're used to, like, pretty cheap shipping. And so $8 on a $5 order seems steep. But overall, you're still at a really good price. So, um and then I think there's, like, thresholds throughout where, like, if you order a little bit more, shipping's not going to get too much more expensive. For the second pack, it was $4. Okay. So, yeah. So, for a second pack, so now if you're going to spend $10 on yarn, it's $12 for shipping. Um, And you're at 22 And then what is that? 22 divided by 16 is it's very cheap per ball. Huh? Yeah, a little over a dollar a ball. So, not quite to a dollar fifty. So yeah. Um let's see. Uh Twin Twiller said it she's got a ton of hobby cotton given by a friend. The Cotton King twirls makes gorgeous soft shawls. That's good to know. Um Zuko is asking what weight on cotton on the cone. I'm not actually sure. Um, I really haven't done enough weaving. I was going to try and find a pattern with some, like, guidelines and take a look at, like, the the reads that I have. Um, but I, I I need to do a little bit more shopping around um, and, and a little bit more research. What's that? Sure. So... Uh, yeah. So, the Cotton King twirl that was mentioned. That's, uh, it looks very, very similar. Um. It looks very s similar to, uh, like the, what do they call it? Red Heart. Um, what is the name of that? The the four-stranded one. Oh, it's a wrap rainbow. It's a wrap rainbow. Yeah. 
So it looks like the It's a Wrap Rainbow, and then it also looks like that one from Hobby Lobby. Um, huh? Sugar Wheel, I think, is spun, at least lightly. Um, my brain is apparently not doing so well. Um, let's try just going to Hobby Lobby's website. Yarn. Yarn. Fiber. Yarn. Might actually be a 50-50 cotton blend. So it's definitely not sugar wheel. Sugar wheel spun. Um, somebody might throw it in there. Um, let's go back and find a 50-50 acrylic cotton. I really thought it was 50-50. Oh, well. I'm not sure what it is, but Hobby Lobby makes a uh, a stranded cotton yarn that looks very much like this as well. Um, but it looks like a very nice yarn. I've worked with a bunch of different stranded cottons. They all usually work out really well and make very nice shawls, like uh, Twine Twiddler was saying. So... Um, it's a little bit on the Gracie side. How big of a ball? So 200 gram ball. So that's a pretty good, pretty good deal there. So, um, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure what smileys goes to. Just the, the reference. I might have said something that triggered that but i'm not remembering what it was um you buy some that you're looking for buy a few at a dollar ninety nine or two ninety nine eight pack and add it all in um yeah so vel i think it's talking about ice yarns and so yeah you can you can get a few packs in a lot of cases especially on tuesday nights they run their um their big sale like their promotion bin so if you uh, switch me over to computer, um, they've got a Tuesday promotion and yarn starting at $1.99 a pack. And that's where these mixed lots are coming in. But there's all kinds of just like sale yarn in here. Um, like this is pretty cool here. Um, and so you could chuck this in the cart at 84 cents a ball. And wouldn't add a whole bunch to your uh, your order, but you can you can get it pretty cheap. So you gotta you gotta dig around and look for the best deals. But um, sort by price. Oh yikes! I don't know. It's a mess. Um, this is some sort of, like, ribbon yarn. Um, let me go to the full item page and make the... Whoa, too far. So, you can see here, um, it's some sort of, like, flat, sewn-together yarn here. Um, and... Makes kind of an interesting looking scarf, but it looks like a bit of a disaster to work with. Those are 25 cents on the box. Yeah, so you can get a four pack of that for a dollar. Um, so if you wanted to try it, you certainly get enough to mess with. Um, a while back, I used to make uh, like Barbie clothes, uh, and specifically, they were My Little Pony dolls. Um, and out of yarn similar to this, where it was like flat tape yarn. It was the stuff that was really popular for those like ruffle scarves for a while, um, like maybe six, seven years ago. And you could make really cool skirts by using regular yarn and picking up, um, say like every fourth loop 
and then you could get like this really nice puffy skirt. And so I, I would bet that this would do the same. So, um, and that actually worked for baby skirts as well as for doll skirts. You could just make it bigger. Um, but if you didn't want like a ruffly skirt like this, you might be able to make kind of a cute little girl's skirt out of like maybe this white, red, orange one here. So, um, just, there, there might be interesting things you can do that are not the specific scarf that they're telling you to bake. So, if you want to give 25 cent yarn a chance, um, that's what you've got there. Um, I don't want this pop-up. There's a lot of pop-ups, and I don't know how to make them go away. That one's got a closed preview. All right, let's go back. Are we still sorted by price? I don't think we are. It says we are, but... No, I'm on the promotion. I just... It lost the sorting. So there are some interesting 25 cent ones, though. Like this Chainette Airshine Beige is interesting. Um, some 30 cent Merino. Uh, mohair for anyone who wants to try mohair. Uh, these are probably Sale Luxury Premium Anthracite Black. It's super fine alpaca, wool, acrylic, polyamide. It's really kind of cool looking. Um, what's that? Yeah, so it's very, very fine. The three millimeter crochet hook. But you get 10 balls of it. They're 30 cents a piece. So for three bucks... You get, uh, they're only 30 grams. So you're you're going to end up with 300 grams. But, like, if you wanted to do a really big shawl or something, it'd be kind of cool. $2.99, even if it's 8 bucks to ship it. Like, you're at $11 for 10 balls of yarn. It's not a bad deal. So. Um, Val's saying they're not all weird. Yeah, there's there's some interesting stuff in here that's, it's a little bit more normal. So there's like some 33 cent um, super fine shine shimmer. Um, it's acrylic polyamide. It looks really, really glossy. Um, it's got kind of a cool like multicolor tone to it. But um, here's the individual string. It looks like a shoelace a little bit. But that would work out pretty cool. Could make interesting doilies. Um, they've got it in multiple colors there. Beige. Um, kind of a cream, a black. They've got some raffia. So yeah, there's, there's definitely some much more normal yarns for under 40 cents a ball. Um... This sale winter yarn here, 60% wool, 40% acrylic, looks like a very nice, just normal, basic yarn. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Javi has cones, but there are warehouses in New York that are mill ends. Um, okay, that's good to know. Um, I'll have to look around a little bit. Um, it's a little bit tough, like, right now because of all the stuff going on to find things like that in places that are shipping and stuff. But I will definitely take a look and see if I can find, um, find what you're talking about there with the mill end warehouses. Um, yeah. And, and Val mentioning again, like if you sort by price, you can find some cool cheap stuff. Yeah. They're, there's really some cool stuff. If you if you wanted just to, you know, if if it was, uh, if you had some birthday money and or, you know, some yarn budget set aside and you really wanted to see how far you could push your yarn budget, um, I mean, you could get, like, sweater quantities of yarn. So this is a 50-gram uh, ball of a DK weight yarn. They're 33 cents a piece. Um, so realistically you get sweater quantities for six dollars. Um, and it's viscose 
it's 100 percent viscose so it's a natural fiber um and it's really kind of a cool dark purple i actually kind of want that it's pretty cool looking i feel like the little purple flecks in it it's pretty neat like i think the whole thing is purple but there's like little bright hints in there so raffia viscose maroon looks very cool so and then there's a navy and a black to go with it and then a what they're calling blue but is really more of like a mint it's pretty cool looking so anyway 33 cents a ball is hard to pass up so uh twin twiddler saying she wants to redo their website um it's it's a little rough um i don't think it's intended for like an end consumer i mean i guess that's their market but like i don't know it feels like the type of website that you would use if you were a wholesaler so um yeah so yeah um a few more people joining us welcome we're just kind of chatting about yarn and things uh you know crochet and a little bit about weaving and just trying to answer some questions um i didn't have a whole lot planned for the evening stream um but i did want to stream it's saint patrick's day um I've gone to Peoria has a, a massive St. Patrick's Day parade, um, which has been canceled this year. But uh, I've I've gone every year for, I think, like eight years. And and I was a little sad today that I didn't get to get to go party like parade and stuff like that. So. Um, I wanted to at least make sure that I was streaming, even if I didn't have a, a real, uh, good topic to talk about. So, um, yeah. So that's, that's about all I've got really to chat about. Um, what are you guys working on? I, I assume most people are stuck at home, uh, and and hopefully getting to spend some time working on projects that maybe have fallen by the wayside or things that you've really wanted to work on but haven't had the opportunity to do um so so yeah what are you what are you guys working on um this rock and roll yarn is really interesting. It looks like the rock star, but it's got like a stripe of another color through it. Um, it's pretty cool looking. Um, some I really like and some I'm not a fan of. Like this is clearly the pink and gray rock star colors with blue and green in it. And that, that does nothing for me. Um... They're, like, I I don't like that color blend at all, personally. Um, and maybe it would look awesome, and I, a lot of times I don't like color combinations. But uh, the rainbow black is very cool. It kind of goes to, like, a oil slick color and then fades into, like, a more rainbowy pastel. Um... The salmon green shades is kind of cool. It looks like a fish. And sort of like a duck. It's kind of cool. But yeah, so there's some cool ones in there, but uh, also some very odd ones. This one's a little bit like a fire. So. um, Let's see... Uh, Vail says I look very festive. Uh, thank you. I've got a whole lot of shamrocks going on. Um, let's see. Uh, Vail's working on a six-pointed star piece 
You make two and form a sweater using ice mohair with silver flecks. Interesting. Um, so that sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to picture exactly how it goes together, but um, it sounds sounds pretty interesting. Um, I made a five point star blanket once, and that was fun until it got to about here. And then the, the rows kept getting so big. Like you were, you were at, you know, 30 stitches here. And then it was like a hundred stitches around here. And by the time you were here, it was like 500 stitches just to finish one, uh, one lap around. It, it got pretty out of control fast. So pointy things can get really stitch heavy really quick. So I don't envy having to make two of them. Um, making one and then be like, okay, I'm done, except that I got to start this whole process over again. So um, so good luck with that. And sounds pretty interesting. Make sure you, that you share it with me on Facebook or Instagram so I can see uh, later on what you were talking about. Um, Patricia is saying she's working on blankets for her grandkids. Um, she's at 12 grandkids, so she's got to start early. Yeah, uh, one a month. Um, and, and then you'll be done by Christmas. So, uh, hopefully you are almost done with your third one. <laughs> um, let's see. Twine Twiddler just finished up a virus blanket to raffle at a local animal shelter and working on, uh, mommy daughter shawls for a sick little girl. That's, uh... The virus blankets are pretty interesting. Um, I've done a virus shawl, um, and it was pretty, uh, like, I don't know. It was, I thought it was fun to work up. I don't know if I've got it. I don't see it in the heap over here. Um, and that's too bad about the mommy daughter shawls for, uh, a sick girl. That's, um, unfortunate, but hopefully it brings them a little bit of happiness to have the matching shawls. Um, artfully infinity scarf with red heart unforgettable. Um... I'm not sure if artfully is a question to me or if that's the name of the shawl. Um, it could potentially be either. Um, but an infinity scarf with Red Heart Unforgettable uh, sounds interesting. Red Heart Unforgettable is one of those yarns that is absolutely stunning when worked up in the ball um, and is a little bit miserable to work with at least in my experience it's a it's a single weight yarn or a single ply yarn and it has that tendency that like you can pull it and separate all of the plies apart um and and can be a little bit fragile and a little bit difficult to frog um but looks very very nice when it's worked up um let's see vel saying they form an l when folded which is the arm and body of one side. Okay. I think I can picture how that goes together. So they seam up the center of the front and back, it sounds like, rather than seaming on the edges. Maybe? Um, if they fold into an L and make the arm, I think. Um... Let's see. Oh, okay. She just couldn't remember the uh the second name. Got it. I'm I'm with you. Um Artfully Simple by Moogly Blog is what my husband's asking potentially. Um if it is, I think I have one of those. Yeah. 
Um, I think this is an artfully simple infinity scarf. Is it? Is it like a net? I can pull it up myself, actually. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so this is the Artfully Simple uh, Infinity Scarf. I made it out of uh, a yarn that I bought on clearance at Hobby Lobby. It's, I think, a silk blend? Um, it's a very weird yarn. It weighs, like, 100 pounds, even for this, like, little tiny... Obviously, it doesn't. It weighs probably 100 grams, but it's it it weighs so much more than you'd think that it should. Um, and it feels like cool and like almost wet to the touch. It's a very weird yarn, but I thought it was pretty. Um, and I have a bunch of it somewhere. Uh, yeah, let me move my computer so I can show it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it's, I think it's, a, I think it was called Hint of Silk. Or Hint of Silk, anyway. Um, but this is kind of a fun, fast one to work up from Moogly Blog. Um, lots and lots and lots of chains. So I'm going to lay it on the table so that you can see it without the background of my, uh, outfit showing through. So we'll flip cameras in just a second. So there you can sort of see... It's just lots and lots of chains, but it's pretty uh, pretty fun to, to work up, if I remember correctly. This is a pretty old project for me at this point. I think this is probably five or six years old, if I had to guess. So, um, But yeah, like I said, this uh, hint of silk, I think they clearanced it all out, and then they didn't carry it for a while, and I think they carry it again. Um but it's a weird yarn. It's it's oddly heavy, and like I said, it feels almost like damp to the touch, um, because it's like cool and and almost wet feeling. But, but yeah, I I think it turned out pretty, and I imagine it will turn out very nice in uh in the Red Heart Unforgettable, since that's what it was worked up with in her example. So. Um, yeah. So that's cool. I'd love to see that as well if you want to share it with me at uh, Experiments and Crafting on Facebook or Instagram. Um, you can just send me a direct message or if you post it, just tag me in it or something like that. Um, I just like seeing what people are working on. It's just fun. Um, yeah, I, I'm a couple days behind on posting on Instagram. Um, things just kind of got away from me, but I'll try and catch back up, re retroactively post some from the last couple days and then, uh, yeah. So, um, what I, what I'm talking about there is that I've got sort of like a national crochet month challenge going on on Instagram. I, I've been trying to post every day. Um, I think I've missed a couple of days in a row. But, uh, if you're interested at all, I've got like the prompts on, uh, Instagram. You can look around. There's like a little, uh, purple and blue, um, like space background. And it's got like every day of March and there's like a little, um, yeah, I could just open up Instagram and show you rather than, um, trying to describe it verbally. Nope. Um, all right, so this is what I'm talking about here. Um, it'll open. So, uh, so today is green for St. Patrick's Day. You would just post something green. So maybe a project that you're working on that's green, maybe a hook that's green, maybe a favorite yarn. Um, and then just use the hashtag experiments and crafting. And then I will kind of keep an eye on that hashtag and uh, look and see what people are doing. Um, there's not really much of a point to the challenge, per se. 
other than it's just something fun to do for the month of March. Um, tomorrow's crocheting in public. Uh, that's probably replaced by crocheting in your house because you're supposed to stay out of the public. Um, yeah, don't, don't intentionally go out into the public when we're all supposed to be self-quarantining. So, um, and then, uh, Tomorrow's Wednesday, so Thursday is, is spring flowers. Thursday is the first day of spring. So um, if you've got... <laughs> My husband's saying that crochet at least six feet from other people if you're going to go into public. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Um, if if you absolutely must, but, but yeah. Uh, so Thursday is the first day of spring, and... I, I've just got a, a spring flower. So that can be can literally be flowers that you see, but it, it could also be flowers that you've crocheted, flowers on a project bag. Um I I don't care. Just whatever. Just things it's just something to do on Instagram. So if you're interested, you can just post and tag me. Um if I click experiments in crafting. So this is what I normally do. Um, is click experiments and crafting and then just see, um, a lot of these I'm recognizing as my own posts, but, um, there have been one or two where people have participated, um, and, and, you know, tag me in them. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. So some of them are not related to the channel in any way. They're just, uh, people using a hashtag of experiments and crafting like because they were experimenting with some sort of craft but but yeah so um twine twiddler says she just tagged me in the post of a blanket so we can take a look at it real quick um must not be on Oh, okay. Did I miss it? Um, ah, this one right here. Okay. So yeah, this one right here is um the this is the virus blanket. So uh virus shawl is basically exactly the same thing but split in half. Um, so it would be like this part and this part would be a shawl. And then like, if you do it duplicated, it's a blanket. So, um, could be, um, doesn't say, but, um, I think she did say it was out of ace yarns. So, so yeah, it could be the one that looks like dazzling. It does look like it's got some sparkle, and I think she mentioned that. So, um, Tracy's asking if I have any tips for weaving in ends neatly. Ends always throw off the continuity continuity of the stitch and looks messy. Um, so you've got a couple options. I I generally uh try and find spots. Let me see. What do I have that I can show this with? This is actually a pretty good example here. Um, let me push my computer way out of the way. And we'll switch cameras here. But. So what you want to do is kind of look for spaces where, where sewing in ends um, will hide. So if you look on, on he here... Uh, what's good and centered? Um, along the bottom of this stitch, there's a whole lot of vertical pieces. Um, let me tip this up. That'll help. All right. So along the bottom of this stitch, you can see there's a whole lot of vertical pieces. Um, uh, this is a good spot to put, like, to hide a, a yarn tail. So you can run underneath and behind a lot of these bits um, where you're going to have a harder time hiding an end on like just a single stitch that's maybe a little bit smaller. So if you can kind of 
redirect your needle. Um, and what that might mean is instead of going directly into the closest stitch, you might have to go through the top of another stitch. Um, so like if your if your tail was right here, sorry, if your tail was right here, you'd have to go in and then kind of snake it along here until you could get to the chunk where you can really hide your stitch in here. Um, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense without actually showing you um, what I mean 100%. That's a little harder. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can crochet over your ends. Um, it's a little bit tricky, I think. But what you do is you lay your yarn down and then as you work your stitches, you, you sort of incorporate it with the little V shapes. So normally when you work into the top of a, or you know what I mean, you've got your, your V shape and you work your hook underneath, um, you, you just lay the other yarn on top and just go underneath and incorporate the, the tail in as you're doing that. Um, other than that, it, it's really just about trying to pick up behind stitches and, and really um, sort of staying out of the way. If you know which side of the fabric is going to show, you can push your yarn through to the other side and try and hide it on the back side. Um, I know with the very few pieces of knitting that I've tried to sew ends in on, um, knitting's a lot harder to hide your ends than crochet. Um, crochet's got these nice, like, vertical pieces that you can hide behind. And so if you've got, you know, multiple vertical pieces, you can sort of hide your yarn behind. Um, knitting does not. It, it seems a little bit trickier to hide your, hide your yarn a little bit nicer. Um, and, and that might be partly out of my inexperience, but I, I find it a little bit easier. Excuse me. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I find it a little bit easier to hide stitches in crochet. So, um, I don't know if that helps necessarily, but I don't really have anything half worked that I can show, uh, how I would sew the ends in. So. Oh, you know what I do have? Hold on. I have these guys. I think... Like, none of my ends are woven in on these. Um, and I've got new yarn needles. Yeah, so all these guys need their ends woven in. Um, depending on what kind of needles you're using, um, you might, might invest in a decent yarn needle uh, with a bent tip. Sometimes that makes all the difference. But I'm trying to find a good um, I was gonna try and find here's a good example. All right. So this is an, a, a decent example of a difficult one to weave your ends in on. Um, so there's nothing good up here that I want to weave into. Um, it's it's the tops of of stitches and they're post stitches and so they're all tipped backwards and they're a little bit tricky. But if I flip this project over, um, you can see we're gonna adjust the lighting just a little bit there. Um, you can see that there's a whole bunch of like ends right in a row and so if i pick this yarn up here run it through my yarn needle and all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm on the top of this stitch so i'm gonna go down until i can get to where i need to be so i'm gonna bring that yarn along there and then i'm gonna start going across and picking up all, where are they at? Oh, I went too far. There they are. Um, picking up all of these like legs of the stitches. Hopefully this is 
Let me pick them up and then I'll tip it and show you because it's hard to do backwards. Um, but there, I've got all these like little legs on here. And hopefully you can sort of see my yarn needle behind there. But when I pull this out like this, that yarn pretty much disappears in there. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the last stitch that I ran through. So it's this set of legs right here. I'm going to skip this leg and go back into the stitch right there. So skip one and pick up the next one. And then I'm just going to run it right back through all the stitches that I just did. And if you don't skip that one, you're just going to pull your yarn back out. But if you skip one and then they kind of bunch up and you can just kind of pull them. Um, or what I like to do is let them bunch and cut this. I don't know if I've got scissors. Yeah, I've got scissors. Um, so if I snip this while they're bunched and then pull that, that yarn just jumps inside and, and so you really can't see my end almost at all there. Um, you just hide it behind all the little legs of the stitches. So if you can find places where you've got lots of legs in a row, that helps a lot. So in this section here, there's there's not a really good place to hide it. Um, you've got you've got some legs, but because the post stitches kind of make a mess of everything. Um, but if you can move it to another section, uh, for example, I would probably go possibly down the post stitches until I got to the bottom portion. Um, or possibly, let's see, where else could it go? Um, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably go down my posts. So I'd, I'd work down and then come back up through here because there's, there's not a good place to hide there. Um, you could maybe pick up the legs across a post stitch, but you'd run the risk of making a bar across here. Um, and then in something like, Something like this, where you've got fans instead of straight stitches. Um, I guess sort of towards the middle. So if, you, if you've got like all of these fans and stuff, you still have the like the bar portion here with the little legs that you can run up underneath. Um, if I lay this right on top, I can show you, this is actually more what I meant, where you've got fans. Um, you can do just one whole fan, skip the last leg, and come right back through. Or you can do a couple of fans if you want to. But, um, yeah, I, I always try and find spots where, where you've got lots of, lots of little stitches all bunched up together, if you can. Um, or, or strings where you can go back and forth and not necessarily limit yourself to like the very outer edge, because a lot of times you're just stuck with like some little bitty single crochets or some pico stitches or something, but take your stitches straight down and find a spot where you've got like a chunk that you can hide it in. Um, and then things like lacy shawls are just going to be kind of difficult. Um, really what I do there is just take a really long uh, yarn and just kind of work my way through trying to find anywhere that you can really lock your stitches in. Um, but if you just do a really extra long tail, if it comes a little unraveled, it'll be okay. Um, because you've got so much buried that you'll never get the whole thing undone. So, um, hopefully that helps. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit tricky to, to show without knowing exactly where you're struggling, but um, that's sort of what, what I do. Um, I do prefer to weave my ends in instead of, uh, sewing over them. I just, I, I don't know. I like, like to actually control where they're at, but, but there are instances where I would rather sew over, um, 
and it, it's just sort of a case by case basis. But, but yeah, if I know that it's going to be a tough edge to sew over, I might try and sew crochet over my ends um, rather than sew them in. So, um, Vel's just telling Twine Twiddler that she likes the virus that Afghan that I showed. Um, let's see, ice yarns. All right, so Twine Twiddler, that Twine Twiddler said that it was ice yarns, cakes, wool, glitz, light. Um, Dawn saying hi, welcome, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm not totally sure how much longer we're gonna stream, but thanks for joining us either way. Um, yeah, so that's, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I was supposed to share with you guys this week. Nothing's coming to mind, but um, next week we're, I don't think I have much more of a topic, so if you guys have an idea of what you might like to talk about, um, I can try and do a little prep work. Otherwise, we'll probably do more of the same. Um, I know, like I said, I know a lot of people are, are stuck at home, and so I'm, I'm hoping to be able to stream every week so that we can, you know, chat and do something social that doesn't require interacting with uh, people in person. So um, this is kind of a fun little outlet for that right now. Um, but yeah, so um, I think somebody asked me in a comment to go through how I, uh, how I basically do my yards to, to grams calculation. So I could maybe talk a little bit about that. I think I talked about it in our yarn weights video, but we could talk maybe a little bit more about that um, next week as well. So, um, but yeah, otherwise I think I'm probably going to wrap up for the evening unless there's any like last minute questions that anyone has for tonight. Um, as always, you can find me, uh, at Experiments and Crafting on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I, again, I'm working on that Instagram challenge. So if anyone wants to participate, please do, um, and tag me with the hashtag Experiments and Crafting. Um, if you are trying to actually get my attention, um, at Experiments and Crafting, uh, will actually send me a notification, um, to, to get my attention or you can send a direct message through either of those platforms so um yeah i and and then of course you can use youtube's comment section so um i do try and check things but you guys know i work full time and so sometimes those go a little bit more un unanswered uh if if i get a little bit busy so, yeah, if if my husband doesn't bug me to answer them, sometimes I do it, but not always. Um, I really do enjoy answering them. It's just uh, if I if I let it go a little bit too long, then it becomes more of a chore because it I've got a bunch to answer and I kind of got to like search around and make sure I got them all. Um, so if if I if you ask me something and I miss it, I apologize. Just either send me a message on another platform or re ask it somehow. Um, uh, Val saying she went to the post in the Facebook group. But membership is pending. Okay. Um, I will take a look at that. I thought I made it so that everybody would just automatically get uh, added, but I may have messed something up. Um, but I will, I'll go through and make sure I approve everybody who's waiting. So, um, I might have locked down posts or something strangely. Um, we'll see. I, I'm trying to figure out how to run the Facebook groups, but they're a little bit, uh, odd. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, social media is not, well, not social media, but, uh, 
Facebook and Instagram are not my husband's favorite, so um, he's not as much help there as he is on YouTube and and would be on Twitter. So, but all right, well. With all that being said, happy St. Patrick's Day, and I think we're going to wrap up for the evening. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that I see you all next week, and we'll chat a little bit more about yarn and crochet, and have a good rest of your week. Stay healthy. Good night. <laughs>